Welcome to the Ping Pod, the Ping Pong Podcast by Ping Skills. Welcome, Alois. Thank you, Jeffrey. We've had an interesting question from Bud um, talking about the Ping Pong Zone. It now, was. Uh, it certainly was interesting, and uh, reading through it, it uh, cap- captured my imagination. He started off by telling us there is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition. And it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is a dimension of imagination. It is an area which he calls the ping pong zone. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) See, see? (laughs) Interesting, huh? You know where you got that from, don't you? Uh, The twilight zone. (laughs) <laughs> he was never really a fan. Yes, but basically, Bud, he, you know, he learned how to get into the proper position, and he learned the strokes, and he was feeling really comfortable. But he went to a club, and a strange thing happened. It was like this other world. Yeah, and it does happen, doesn't it? Like, who has been to a club and thought, "Whoa, I feel pretty good about my table tennis," and seen these guys out there that look pretty hopeless? look like they can't hit the ball on the table. You know, they've got these awkward shots. They do this and that. Mm. And you think, beauty. (laughs) Here comes a win. But... Tell them what happened to Bud. (laughs) Poor Bud. Yeah, and I I feel for Bud because I've seen this happen so many times. So Bud gets out there. he, he He watches a couple of matches. He sees that these guys don't look very good at all. And he this gets his chance against another player who he... He gets on the table against and thinks, this guy can't hit the ball. The first ball goes into his foot. The next one flies off the end of the table in the warm-up. But then the game starts. Yep. And you know what? No good. Bud got smashed. Yep. And then he started getting frustrated and he couldn't get balanced and he couldn't play shots he would normally play and it just got worse and worse for him. Yeah. And, you know, I, the first thing I think to, to think about, and I hear this often, mm. is players come to me and say, say, like, I lost to this guy and he was really hopeless. Mm. Unfortunately, table tennis isn't like diving or gymnastics. It's not only about how good your strokes look. It's about putting the ball on the table and doing what you can to, to do that. Yep. And, and some of these guys have been playing for years and years yeah. and they're really good at what they do. They are really good at what they do. Yeah. As, as it, it looks really unconventional. It looks ugly in some situations. But they get the ball on the table. They know what to do. They're putting a whole lot of junky spin on the ball. But they're really good at it. Yeah. And they're really good at that. They don't look fantastic because they don't play classic strokes. But what they do, they do well. Yes. Yeah, and so interestingly, Bud actually beat the more conventional players who were the better players on the night. So he beat yes. what they would turn the better players and lost to the weaker players. Yeah, and again, I've heard that story quite often, and that happens to a lot of players out there. So, the, so firstly, okay, these guys, awkward, ugly strokes, but they beat you when you're starting out. Yep. So what should we do? Should we try and play like that? Uh Uh-uh. No. Because that has limitations, doesn't it? Absolutely. The reason why these players are still playing at the club level is because they have a limited game style. Those players that play really awkwardly and just junk the ball back and play side spin and unconventional shots, as we said, are good at what they do, but there's a certain level. There's a ceiling that they can reach. You cannot hit the ball fast and explosively enough at a higher level if you're playing unconventional strokes. That's right. So what's the answer? How do you you get past that? Is it just developing your own strokes? It is. And I always have to encourage those players Mm. to just push past that zone. Yeah. Once you you can play your strokes conventionally, and you reach the critical point of speed where you can play those shots a little bit faster, then you start to overpower those unconventional players. But in that learning experience, it can be pretty tough. Okay, so once you get to play it a bit faster, they have trouble making the shots, then they're not in position, they start missing the balls. 
and suddenly it all becomes easier for you. Exactly. So if you're playing the ball at, let's put some numbers to it, at 50 kilometres an hour, they've got time. They can play their unconventional shot. Step it up to 80 kilometres an hour and suddenly they don't have time. And because they're not putting topspin on the ball or genuine backspin on the ball, then the ball can't dip onto the table. Mm. It can't get onto the table with, with straight backspin. So then they start to struggle. Okay. And I think also people can have problems with the early part of a rally against these type of players before they can get their strong strokes in. So, yes. so what can they do with that area of the game? Yeah, so then, then it's... Uh, there's no, there's no quick solution, again, unfortunately, but it's a matter of starting to understand the different types of spin that's on the ball. And you know what? It's a really good learning experience. And I always say, especially to junior players, get down to your club and play in the D grades and E grades as you're coming through, because that is where you learn about the spin. Often players that don't do that have a limit to how well they cope with anything different in the rally. They're fantastic if the ball's coming fast at them in a straight line with good top spin. But as soon as the ball changes a little mm. bit in direction, they struggle. So that's why that's a really good grounding. Playing in those lower level at club uh, level matches yep. is fantastic for you later on. Yeah. Even though it might be a real struggle physically and mentally to start with. So there you go, bud. You're definitely not alone. It's a lot of people out there, but the key is persistence, developing your strokes, and learning to read spin. Get those three right, and you'll start to really dominate those sorts of players. Yep, so remember, you just need to reach that critical level, that critical speed that you can play your strokes at, recognizing spin, and then you're gonna start to push those players down. All right, thanks for the interesting question, bud.